give it maybe two minutes to let everybody know. All right. Well, it looks like we have got about six folks on here right now. I would love for y'all to say hello, say hello. Let us know that you are watching and we're going to dive in. I, there may be some folks that have not been here with us before or you haven't had the opportunity to tune in live and you've just been catching the replays. I've been seeing a lot of those comments. Those are awesome. And thank you so much for tuning back in when you're able. We are doubly blessed tonight because not only are we getting this wonderful little baking class, but we are also getting some wonderful knowledge and all of the advice and just all kind of the good vibes from Sierra McKissick. So mm -hmm. welcome back, Sierra. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited. One, I love cookies. I feel like I always say I love what we're cooking, but guys, it's true. It's true. It's true. I love cookies, so I'm really excited about having gluten-free cookies. And I don't think I've ever had an almond cookie. So I'm never double one, excited. Like with almond flour or even like I've almond never paste? it almond at all. I've never had an almond cookie. I'm kind of a chocolate chip girl. I'm kind of basic. I stick with my chocolate chips. So I'm branching out here. I'm really proud. Yes. Okay. And your your taste buds and anybody that you share these with are going to thank you for it. I think almond flour is so underutilized in our kitchens. So you'll still love the chocolate chips, I'm sure, because I do. Oh, but this will yes. be a good one to put in rotation. Try it out. <laughs> yes, I'm open. I'm excited. Okay. Lots of new things for tonight. Well, I tried to uh, I tried to share this with a couple of different places so that they can know that we are here. And hey, hey, Quinn, hey, that yes, Yvette says yes on the chocolate chip. So you have some yes. fellow chocolate chip fans. Yes. <laughs> Let me know in the comments your favorite cookie. I want to know. I need to yeah. branch out with my cookie, my cookie palette. I need to expand it. Yes, let us know your favorite cookie in the comments. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about Sierra because I know there are some folks that maybe you found us because of the McKissick Health and Wellness page or even One Choice Magazine, or maybe you are here because of the Meharry Wellness Club over at the Center for Health Policy at Meharry Medical College. Whatever the reason, we are thankful. And I'll be your kind of walking, talking recipe, if you will. I'm Chef Kay, if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you before. And then Sierra is our behavioral and spiritual health wellness guru. Can I say guru? Yes. Okay. I love it. It makes, it makes my ego get a little bit bigger since we're doing cookies and I don't bake often. Yes, give me all the positive energy. <laughs> So y'all have to send all the positive energy in the chat too. When you tell us your favorite cookie, send in all the hearts and all the love. But no, Sierra is, she is in my mind. She's the founder and CEO of McKissick Health and Wellness. You heard me speak on it many times, an absolute amazing digital education company, really focusing on our behavioral and spiritual health issues. So Sierra and her team help companies, small teams, organizations that are in the educational arena as well as corporate arena really help with their mindset and like the whole community health of those organizations mm -hmm. i can't say enough good things really i can't thank you so, thank you as you all oh my gosh white chocolate white oh. chunk chocolate macadamia this is a favorite okay okay that sounds like one to add to the recipe book and oatmeal raisin is a favorite oh. I do love oatmeal raisin. I do. Now you're reminding me of all the things I need to eat when I'm ready and when I feel no, no. time to eat them. <laughs> yes. Miss Miss Bianca says yes with like five exclamation points. So Yes. I I love it. Hopefully you all will be able to add this cookie into your rotation. Um, and I know that there are tons of different food intolerances that folks are discovering or have been having to live with for a while now. This recipe is just one of those gluten-free ones that you can have in your pocket. So if you're going to an event and you want it to be friendly, 
to anyone that may be dealing with celiac or other reasons where they can't process that gluten. This one's awesome, but it doesn't sacrifice taste. So mm -hmm. that's going to be the number one thing. Sierra, is your oven preheated? It is. I'm okay. ready to go. Okay. Our ovens are preheated. We've got a lot of our ingredients measured out, which is what I encourage you to do at home too. Like have that prep done before you even start trying to add something to a bowl. Just to tell you about what we've got, very, very few ingredients, which is also another thing I love about this cookie. Mm -hmm. It's just like whole ingredients, not a whole bunch of mess and fuss that you have to deal with. So we are going to be whipping up some egg whites to some really nice soft peaks. Perfect. They make this cookie so nice and tender. And then I've got my granulated sugar that I just started sifting here. I'm going to finish sifting that. And then some almond flour. You can take almonds, put them in a food processor, and kind of hit pulse, pulse, pulse until they get to like a fine powder and then sift them. Or you can buy the almond flour this way. Totally up to you. And I've got some almond extract and some vanilla. That's it. I'm sure you all will jazz these up a little bit on your own whenever you start making them. So Sierra, I am going to sift all my dry ingredients together. Now I will okay. say the sifting is optional, but this is going to be my sugar that's in the bowl first. And can you explain the purpose of sifting to a chef? Yes, because sometimes we skip it. Now for me, I store my ingredients in like bulk containers. Um, Kind of like this i always take them out of the bag well when i do that there can be moisture that gets to them and you'll see like these little chunks are kind of this little sugar crystal we'll call it or whatever well i don't want that to be in the cookie mm -hmm. so i'm going to sift that out if at all possible now if you can't sift them it's totally fine it's not going to be the end of the world but i do just because you get these little chunks in restaurants we may store them in huge bulk bins and forbid somebody like drop a bag of rice or something around it. And then you want to sift it just in case there's a little grain of rice in it. Um, so I do it there. Now the almond flour, I like to sift it, same reason. And then also I think that it aerates it just a little bit. Okay, so that's what I was wondering. Rise. Yes. Okay. When you're thinking about that rise, the sifting really helps. Okay. So if you've got yours already sifted, you just want to combine them together. So you want okay. to get the sugar and the almond flour all in one bowl, and we're going to stir those together. Okay. See, now this is funny because someone said white chocolate macadamia nut. Now somebody else said milk chocolate macadamia nut. Oh, heavy with the I macadamia nut. You know, I've... I really stuck with chocolate chip. I'm kind of embarrassed now. I've, I've had oatmeal raisin, but I'm kind of like a don't fix it if it's not broken when it comes to my cookie. <laughs> so I'm okay. excited. I can see that. And a creature of habit. So that's that, right? Now, would you like me to put in the almond extract too? Yeah, you can put the almond extract in there, or you can toss it into your egg whites. Okay. I'll probably end up tossing mine into my egg whites. Egg whites. Figured that. I know that much. Uh, dry with dry wet with wet. I learned that. Yes! I learned that. I'm pretty proud. <laughs> And so if there are those of y'all at home that don't bake or you look at some of your like baking recipes as intimidating, I definitely want you to take note of this class because yes. you have someone who uh, you would be friends with. Feels your pain, yes. <laughs> yes. And we're trying, we're championing this right now. I will echo Chef K with um, this recipe having simple ingredients. And most of them use the same measuring spoons. And, and that was really a blessing for me. You know, sometimes I get a little turned around with my spoons and my cups. <laughs> so I can appreciate that. Yes. It's a three, two, one recipe. I, I love a good baking recipe that's three, two, one, like your pie does and things like that are like that. Mm -hmm. So this is a three egg white, 
two cups almond flour, one cup sugar kind of recipe. Yeah. So it really, I always know it. Doesn't matter where I'm at, I can, you know, I can make them. And some people are like, how can you just bake that? Or how can you just cook it? Most chefs are going off of some type of ratio in their head, I promise. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. And See, easier I, to remember. I like too many, this. Too many secrets I'm giving y'all today. I know. We're waiting for that cookbook, chef. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I know. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're all mise en place. We have everything ready. And I'm just tossing together my almond flour and my sugar. I'm about to add my almond extract into my egg whites. Okay. Just the whites. Absolutely no yolk. And then probably about halfway through me whipping up my egg whites, I'm going to add in my vanilla. Okay. Okay. Set that to the side. Now, I know that my hand mixer can sometimes be kind of loud um, because you're right here, you know, over top of me cooking. So I would love to hear from you all in the comments. Sierra might have a question for you all too. So you can, you can type in about both of them. But I really want to know what you are interested in learning how to cook this summer. Because I know I won't be chatting while the hand mixer is going. So just put in the comments. You could fill it with as many things as you want. But let me know what you're interested in learning how to cook. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to think about this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to think about this while we mix. But I feel like I have a short list to get through. So I'm excited about this question a you guys let me know sugar? yeah is it baking related or just regular cooking related let's okay. think about that let's think about that i feel like you're giving me pointers here with the baking and i'm feeling a little more confident so maybe i might tackle an upside down cake or a pie or something like that you know i might try it i know key lime pie is a big hit for a lot of people maybe that's something I could take a stab at. Ooh, okay. We'll think about it. Okay. I noted. Noted. I know some other people that like key lime. So, yes, noted. Oh. Okay. Yes. So, I'm going to get my stand mixer on. We are whipping these until they just have soft peaks. So, think like pillowy kind of cloud. Sometimes I'll tell people to think of shaving cream, but you don't want it to be super thick like shaving cream. You want it to be a lot softer. I'll show you exactly what we're going for. So I'm going to get gotcha. it going and you all let us know in the comments what you want to learn how to do. you all can kind of see where I'm at and I will even knock off one of my attachments to make it really exaggerated because I'm almost exactly where I want to be so if I were to take this attachment and just kind of 
knock everything off and come around. I don't quite have this like soft pillowy look that I'm going for, but I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Like okay. very, very, very cloud like soft reminds you of a pillow or a big bunch of feathers. What do you think gotcha. about yours, Sierra? I think I'm almost there like you. Awesome. Yeah. And I mean, a little man, bit longer. I'm talking. Oh, They're are we ambitious, about. guys? We can do anything. <laughs> we can do anything. Yes. And that's exactly the energy that I am getting from the comments from the eggplant parmesan oh. to really the vegetables. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. I like where we're going with this. As I was uh, mixing, I actually thought about all the macaroons I see Chef K make, and I decided I want in on that. I want in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want in on that, Chef. We're going to have to arrange some things. Oh, and uh, so Bianca says she's not a baker, but she's always wanted to do lemon zucchini loaf. Okay. Ooh, yes. We can okay. tackle that as a community with Kitchen This. I believe in us. Yes. I believe in us. Yes. I believe in us. We got this. I have guys. faith. Got it. I have faith in us too. And the macros, <laughs> that can, we're just going to have to set aside a Saturday morning, but we can do it. Okay. See, it's as easy as that, guys. We've got it. We've got mm -hmm. it. You just set a date and you do it. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to mix just a little bit more. Again, like soft okay. piece. As soon as it gets there, I will take it off and show you exactly what we're looking for. Okay. I probably need to put these back in. I'm gonna get watching if you've been watching or you just joined let us know where you're watching from we are getting our egg whites whipped to these really nice soft peaks this will look a little different if you're used to doing like a meringue they won't look as shiny or as stiff because we don't add sugar in here like a meringue but they're just like a really soft kind of pillowy cloud so mine are i'm probably going one more minute sierra that's it okay i think one i'm with minute. you but guys, I'm really impressed. I think I'm getting there. Yeah, I think I'm there. Yes! I think I'm there. I'm going exactly one minute. So let us know okay. in the comments what state you're watching from, city if you want. <laughs>
I'm adding my vanilla Sierra and then okay. I'm turning my stand mixer off, my hand mixer. All right. And how much vanilla are you adding? You could be fine with just about a teaspoon. Okay. We got Texas in the house, Tennessee, of course, North Carolina, Michigan. All right. From sunny El Paso. I love it. Something about the smell of vanilla that just does my heart good. I'm going to have to send you some of this vanilla bean paste. <gasps> yes. Just consider it on your Christmas list. Okay. I love gifts. Yes. Yay. Okay. Now, this part, y'all, is super simple and probably a little too easy. But sometimes that's what we need and that's what we like. I am going to... Oh, Sarah, that looks good. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty impressed, you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Perfect. I feel the shaving cream vibes. I think we arrived. I'm really excited. I'm going to take a scoop of my egg white mixture. And I'm going to put it into my dry mixture. And I'm just kind of folding and tossing that together. Okay. Seriously, Sierra, as soon as you see that egg white disappear, get you another scoop and add it in there. Okay. Egg whites into the dry. So I'm scooping up some of my egg whites, putting them into the dry. Now, has anybody at home, y'all let me know, have you done a recipe similar to this? You brave souls. I need to I make more have, friends. We have some brave souls out there. We do. I'm joining the club now, guys. We're all in this together. Once you start, once you start like down this path of doing all your own baked goods, mm -hmm. it doesn't taste the same out of the package. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. It's like being a coffee snob. Or a tea snob, you know? Yes. You have to steam it. You have to brew it yourself. I actually had a friend who made us some cold brew coffee. And I'm putting that with these cookies. Because I just know it's going to be an incredible thing. Yes, these are great. Um, I call them tea time cookies. But mm. you'll see at the end, they're just delicate enough. And the flavor pairs well with pretty much any tea leaf. Okay. So y'all will notice as I'm adding in my egg white, it's starting to get like a wet sandy kind of mixture. Mm -hmm. It's becoming closer to what we would recognize as a dough. Agreed. But it turns this wet and sandy and then I just really try and press down on the egg whites in each part until I see those egg whites disappear. I'm using my cookie scoop to get some of mine off my spatula. You could use a spoon or another spatula. I got about two additions of egg whites left. And both Sierra and I are like pressing and folding. Yeah. I'm not trying to make her nervous, but she's got a very nice uh, kind of like folding technique going on. So. Me? Yeah. Oh, like me? Are you sure? Yes. You don't know. This is like going to make my ear. Okay. <laughs> it will literally make my ear. I'm glad. I'm not just, I'm not just pretending, guys. I'm really happy about this. getting 
get all of my all my egg whites out. The roll just smells so good. That vanilla. It that does. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm in love. I don't think anybody in the comments has attempted a recipe like this before. So oh. No, if they try it. Cool. We're all in this together. Learning. I love it. Awesome. Now, Sierra, you have to tell me more because I think are you, you're using your mom's stand mixer, right? So this is my grandmother's mixer. It's a Sunbeam Mixmaster. I'm pretty sure it's like a model from the 50s. So what? I was very ambitious with testing it out like an hour before we started today. <laughs> that was brave. That was very brave. But it, it does. It has an old, a old vibe to it. And my grandmother was a, a serious baker. So this has the mileage on you guys. You have this no idea it. how good your cookies are going to taste because of that mixer. Oh, wow. I receive all of that. I do. I'm ready for a good cookie. No idea. Okay, y'all. So you're looking for a cookie dough that looks very wet, very similar to okay. our crowd favorite chocolate chip, but there's no chocolate chips in it. <laughs> but it looks kind of like that. Okay. So now we're going to get set for baking. I'm okay. going to have my cookie dough kind of over here on my left-hand side. I'm right-handed, so it just works for me. And then in the center, I've got that little extra bit of sugar. I know I sent you the ingredients list. This yes, is you did. And then I like to place my sheet pan just right here, right next to me. So I've almost got this station. Okay. okay. And now I'm going to take my cookie scoop or a tablespoon measure. It's totally up to you all, whatever you have on hand. And I come on around and I literally get a very, very full scoop of my cookie dough. Mm -hmm. And I plop it right down into that bowl of sugar. Oh. Okay. Pop it down into the bowl of sugar. I roll it around like that. Make sure that it's been able to kind of get all the excess sugar off of it. Mm -hmm. You can roll it into a little gentle ball if you want. And then I place it on my sheet pan and repeat. I love this dough. And you yeah. line the sheet pan with the parchment paper? Yes. Okay. Double checking, guys. You get to see me in action. Last time I was like overly prepared. Everything was laid out in advance. This time I'm learning with you all. There is zero wrong with that, though. I love it. I think instructors sometimes make the best, the best students. And y'all, Sierra does teach. And oh. so she was like a very ready student, like read the syllabus three times. <laughs> I did them. I love this. And you put it in sugar. I've never seen this before. And then you just roll it? Yeah. And I roll it, honestly, just like two times. And then done. And it goes on the sheet, right? My goodness. It's so cute, too. That's why I like bacon. This is a great recipe for the whole family. You know, like, this is a very easy, the like, kiddos can get in and do this part. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done them once before in a larger setting with a lot of kids where then we just gave them little plastic baggies of sugar and uh -huh. they were able to just kind of drop their tablespoon of cookie dough down into the bag, shake it for a second, and then on to the next one. Cool. I thought I did that one wrong. A little less messy that way, too. Yeah, but kids love that part, too. Ooh, yeah. And Chef, you do this all the time with the kids, so. 
And now you'll see a lot of variations. Some people like to roll them in uh, powdered sugar. Mm. Yeah, you guys. Totally. I'm learning a lot today. See, now this gets to the point for me where it's just like, I'm in the zone and it's peaceful. I can turn on music and make like 10 sheet trays. 10 sheet trays later, I'll be like, oh my, I'm still baking. <laughs> and that seems like a lot. 10 sheet It like, it flies by though. The time flies by. I mean, I know that in the kitchen is my place and I, I saw where you did a chat outside earlier. Like, where is your, I don't know, where's your, like, getaway space? Or your, like, You know, place? ironically, my office is that space. You know, some people are like, I have to get out of the office to think. But I have so many ideas and thoughts outside of the office. I go into the office to kind of center them, right, and organize them because I know it's a place for structure. And so I can get my brain to actually slow down more when I'm in the space for that to happen. But yeah, yeah. I did enjoy the outside session that we did earlier this week though. It was great. It was almost like an out of body experience because the birds were chirping and it's like they surrounded me once they heard the meditation music. It was awesome. And you can kind of hear it in the video towards the end when we do meditation. Y'all have to check it out. I saw the uh, I saw the first half of it. And I know it's on the McKissick Health and Wellness page. Yes. I shared check it, it too, out. So. Check it out. This has been an awesome programming opportunity for the Meharry Wellness Club. I think they're doing an incredible job with this. In a, in a time where, you know, some, some of us are getting out and doing a lot more, but some mm -hmm. of us are just a little bit more comfortable at home. So I'm yes. glad that we still have these online platforms yes. where you can get programming like this without leaving your house. Right. And allow people to ease into it, you know. We've been out of that routine for a while, so it's okay to need to sort of ease into it. Now, I'm going to show you all what my sheet tray looks like. I still have some. I had one that was a little smaller, so I'm trying to pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> They're going to be delicious. That's one thing, too, about y'all making your own. They're artisan. Like... Oh, you know, yes. I expect to receive Oreos that look identical, but mm. if somebody makes me a homemade cookie, I don't <laughs> think it has a little personality. Yeah, a little touch of home to it, you know. Yes. That's one thing I can say, Chef. Um, as a as an adult, we don't encourage play as much as we do as children and so food cooking can become this opportunity for you to play for you to get your hands dirty if you can see me i was like get this off my hand <laughs> and you have to like consciously remind yourself like this is all part of the process you know this is the part of the moment that you're supposed to be enjoying and it's almost like a rewiring within your mind that you have to do and it's a good thing it's a good thing to do with mm -hmm. Now that's very true because sometimes I'll I'll be finished and I'll look at the kitchen and I'm like, Whew, this Who is, did it? <laughs> I did. I, it wasn't me. I wasn't the tornado. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, I was. And now I have to clean it all up. But in the moment, you're exactly right. I'm like, I'm just going to town. Going crazy with it. I love it. So this is what my trade looks like. I have two, four, six, eight, ten. So I was able to get twelve on here, spaced out. Um, I'd say at least an inch in between them. If you don't have an inch, it's okay. They break apart from each other. And I was fine. a bit more modest. 
I always go my <laughs> like, don't put too many, and then you'll fill up the pan entirely. But we're good. All right. I like it. I like I it. I love it. So I'm going into the oven. Our oven's okay. at 325. I'm going to set my timer for 18 minutes. Okay. And then I'll just check them. I look at underneath. So, like, I usually take them out, get my spatula, kind of look under one. If it's got this golden brown on the underside of it, divine. It's perfect. Okay. Yep. Good to know. And then did you have any more batter, Sierra, or did you use I did. All? I have more. I didn't use it all. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep scooping. I know that I now I want to give you all the time to chat because I've talked all this cooking stuff, and now I love to hear about all things wellness and yes. what you, you got going and thinking for us tonight. But I'm just going to keep scooping batter, and I'll probably put mine on a plate. Of course. And I have a question. We always ask about refrigerating the batter. Is that possible with this batter? How long can we keep it? Because I oh, have yeah. little people that come over on the weekends and they would love cookies. <laughs> yes, you can keep it in the refrigerator for like five to seven days. No problem. Okay. Wrap it super airtight in the fridge. It's great. Okay. Good to know. Well, yeah, guys, again, if you're joining us, welcome. So glad you're here watching us today as we tackle gluten-free almond cookies. It's a wonderful Friday, an awesome Friday for cookies, in fact. I thought it was the perfect time to also talk about healthy habits. I mean, we're going to eat delicious cookies. I'm going to have a cup of coffee with it. I think Chef is going to have some tea with hers. It's a great time to talk about eating habits because we're going to eat, right? And we all know that when we talk about eating, we just want to talk about healthy habits in general, right? Because eating isn't something that's outside of our normal routine and our normal way of living. So we want to green like comfort foods. We want to be okay with having comfort foods around us and in our possession and cooking them and baking them. You shouldn't be shy to bake simply because you're afraid of eating sweet. That's a negative mentality to have about it. Food is a neutral zone, right? There's no good, there's no bad, it's all neutral. It's about moderation, it's about understanding your body and knowing what's right for you. So I thought it was a perfect day to talk about comfort food. If you can, I want you to write in the chat, what are some of your favorite comfort foods? Chef, do you have any? I can tell you right off the bat, one of my favorite comfort foods is mashed potatoes. When I have them, I love them a lot. <laughs> I really enjoy mashed potatoes. Um, definitely a biscuit is a comfort food. You know, that stuff that kind of old folks used to say it sticks to the bones, you know? Oatmeal is a comfort food for me. Let me know in the chat you what your comfort foods are. What's I, your I do love mashed potatoes, but I'm going to have to go with ooh, mashed potatoes. I'm going to have to go with any pasta. I, I just, I love just a big bowl of pasta. That is it true. just makes me feel good. That is true. Pasta has that essence to it, right? Where you enjoy being in its presence. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's an activity, right? An experience. And that's a good way to look at food. Food is for you to experience it as a part of life. And not something for you to run from or for some, something for you to be nervous about having around the house. So when we think about food, we really are just thinking about our health in general and how our health is unique, right? So our diet is naturally as unique as our health needs are. And so once you've kind of understood where you are health-wise and what your body needs and what it's asking from you, then you can eat foods that coincide with that what your body needs and it can work together with you instead of working against you each person has their own health needs of course and i'm not a nutritionist i'm not a dietitian so i encourage you to reach out to some i can even list some in the comments of the live after but it's an opportunity for you to just know more about foods like what green vegetables give you energy what fruits give you nutrients and how that works for you. I know Chef does some smoothies, excellent smoothies. And each smoothie 
can give you different nutrients and fuel you in different ways. And Chef has a lot of recipes for smoothies, actually. <laughs> and she'll definitely share those with you. I'm sure it's important for you to like, seek out information to understand not only what you're eating, but also what your body needs in order um, to thrive and to be nourished. Vitamin D is something that a lot of people lack. We all, all tend to have a vitamin D deficiency at some point throughout our lives. And it's things that you can get through milk, of course, but also other foods are available to you. So you never have to look at your diet as something that has to be singular. It can be diverse, it can be robust. Your palate doesn't have to be minimized simply because um, you're, you're trying to balance out different things. I see some people in the comments, Chef will have to help me catch yes. what you're saying because I definitely want to know. So with the comfort food, I know Bianca said all things potatoes and grilled cheese sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Bianca, I think we're friends because when you said grilled cheese, it resonated with me because I do eat grilled cheese as a comfort food. It is. Do you it's, really? I do. I do. And I never thought about it. I usually well, think of like okay. more hearty things, but that is definitely. Bianca also said lasagna. So are y'all really friends now? <laughs> Oof. You know, lasagna is when you want to be fancy tonight. <laughs> And, it and is let's see, food. we got macaroni and cheese and collard greens. Yes, I do love collard greens. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bianca says, hey, friends. So, yes, y'all are friends. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am here for it. Absolutely. Because when we think about food, it should also be, I said, an experience, but something that you can enjoy with other people, right? And that's a good sign to note, too. If you're thinking about eating something, if you're thinking about um, having people over, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to share in that moment and use it as almost a conversation starter, right? Because when you get different people around, you'll also expand your palate, which is why we're having gluten-free almond cookies today. Hello, we're stepping out of the chocolate chip cookie box <laughs> and we're trying something new. So just simply being in relationship with other people can also help you instill healthier habits. And that's really the goal. Whenever we think about our health, we want to think about habits that we can sustain, right? Long-term changes that we can make in our lives to live well and thrive. And that's always our goal. It's not to remove certain things from our refrigerators or remove certain things from our pantries. It's all about building habits that we can sustain and that help us live better. I like to think of it as a mind, body, and soul experience. When you eat, it should be something that uh, empowers your mind and helps your body get the nutrients that it needs, but also helps your soul heal in some ways as well and helps you feel more connected to the people around you as well as the earth because you have all these nutrients that you need. And it gives you this sense of knowing, right? It's this core intuition. That's why we talk about intuitive eating because intu intuitive eating encourages you to use your intuition as you eat, right? And to be in touch with your emotions and your thoughts as you navigate those spaces and choose what foods you're gonna eat for the day. And touch, like, check in with yourself. What do you think, Chef? I heard you. I just, with the intuitive eating, I don't really, uh, I haven't heard intuitive eating. I feel like mm -hmm. emotional eating is what I always, oh my gosh, I eat because I eat this because I'm happy and celebrating. I eat this because I'm sad. But now, mm -hmm. you know, like even if thinking about, you know, kind of intuitive thinking, that puts a whole nother spin on it because yeah. it's got me thinking about things I do just habitually that it's like, Hmm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So sometimes people are using intuitive in their intuition as they navigate their eating habits without even knowing it, right? You walk in the kitchen and you immediately grab some water, right? Because you know, when I'm in the kitchen, I probably need to be drinking more water anyways. And I see it somewhere. It registers that I need that mm -hmm. thing, right? Other people will grab other things from the kitchen to eat simply because they're walking through that space. When you're focusing in on being an intuitive eater, you're also checking in with yourself before you do it, right? It's not necessarily something that you heavily think through, but you're just checking in with your body. Like, before I grab a snack, 
Am I hungry or am I not hungry? You know, is this a good snack for me to eat right now when I know I'm going to have a heavy dinner later, right? Using that sort of intuition to guide yourself because you're aware of where you're going, of what you need, of how your body is feeling in that moment, as well as all of these healthy habits that you want to continue. And that's essentially at the core of you navigating your eating habits, understanding that I want to do things that I can continue, right? I want to start a recipe that I can finish. (laughs) I want to start a trail running or walking that I can finish. You know, I don't want to take on things that I won't finish and then I'll feel negatively about that. And intuitive eating is, is hard on that. We want you to feel good about yourself. We want to feel good. We want you to feel good about the choices that you're making. And we want you to be able to make them again and again. And that's at the core of it. But also being patient with yourself because you won't succeed every day, right? Some days you will have an emotionally heavy day and maybe you'll grab something out of habit, right? And and it'll make you feel like you failed yourself, but don't feel that way. Show yourself some grace. Say, it's been a hard day. I'll pick up my habits because they're important to me. Kind of returning back to your why. Why am I doing this? Not because somebody told me I should, Not because I'm seeing images in media that are telling me my body type is wrong or I should be eating these things because they're popular. Like avocados were a huge thing last year, right? (laughs) It's like you had never heard about avocados until 2020 hit and everybody's quarantined and trying to figure out how to make avocado toast at home. You know, knowing what you need is about you. It's not about what's popular. It's not about chasing trends. It's about understanding how you feel when you eat the things you eat, how you feel when you do the things you do, and how you can continue doing the things that make you feel good. So there are like 10 principles that float around when we talk about intuitive eating. And because this is like a new concept for a lot of us, I kind of want to walk through them a little bit. If we have time, what's our clock on, Chef, for our cookies? Are we doing good? Yeah, we have time. It's on on eight minutes. Okay. So when you think about intuitive eating, one of the first principles, and this this model was kind of developed in like 1995 by two dietitians who really wanted people, they actually studied women's health and really wanted women in particular to feel in charge of their health, right? And to not have all those negative feelings that you get when you think about grabbing a bag of chips while you're in your kitchen, right? So they break down these 10 principles. And one of the first ones is, to just throw out the whole diet mentality. And you know, we hear the word diet and we immediately think of like things that we're supposed to withhold from ourselves, but really diet is referring to your natural eating routine. So it's nothing that's that's being removed from you, but just understanding what you're already doing, right? What's your diet like is a question you hear when you go to the doctor's office and being able to say, well, I eat this a lot. I eat this a little less often and I eat this every other day. You know, being able to pinpoint what your diet routine is, is a great thing to do as a habit in general, but also realizing that you're going to hear a lot of things in media and people who are popularizing like the keto diet and other things like that. And I'm not saying that these things are bad. I'm saying you need to understand what you need before you go testing out other things, right? So kind of throw out this mentality that you need to jump on the bandwagon for every new diet routine or or meal plan that comes out and understand what you need physically and what your body is asking you for. The other thing is to like honor your body, right? Honor the fact that your body has things that it's naturally going to need and you can't rob it of that. There's a natural number of calories that you have to take in every day. And when you rob your body of that, it begins to go into starvation mode. So understanding what your body is saying when it does different things is really important. Another thing is understanding your hunger, your need for food, right? Hunger is a natural thing. It's a signal that our body sends to our brain saying, you haven't fed me, can you feed me something? (laughs) When you hear your stomach growling, I used to have, I used to know a girl who said, my stomach is eating my back. When that happens, you need to eat. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I had ever heard. And I'm like, man, how long do you go out go without food that your stomach is eating your back? You know, understanding your hunger, understanding what it means. And sometimes being hungry 
and your stomach rumbling can simply mean you're dehydrated. So checking in with your body is an awesome thing because sometimes we give ourselves food when we really just need water, right? We need to be hydrated. And many of us are going through our lives dehydrated. You'll see me, I try to walk around now with bottles of water all the time and refill them because now that we've been at home so much, I'm more conscious of how often I'll grab a cup of coffee and there's no glass of water, you know? You gotta have a balance with it. And I'm telling you this because I'm also learning it too, right? We're all learning and constantly evaluating and adjusting how we eat, how we maintain our health and the things that our body needs in order to thrive. Another thing that you have to do, which is completely natural, is challenge the food police. So many of us have grown up with all of these negative thoughts around food, right? We've heard so many things. We've been bullied because of our size. We've heard that only certain people eat these things and skinny people eat these things and you should do this and you should do that. And you have to silence those voices in your head. You have to remind yourself that you are a unique individual and your needs are unique and you know exactly what you need. And in moments where you feel like you don't, you can challenge yourself to search it out and to find the answers that you need in order to feel comfortable with your body and comfortable with the habits and your choices that you're making about your health. So silence the critics in your head. All of those pathogenic beliefs that tell you, you are this, you aren't this, you need this, you don't need this. You have to silence them, start from ground zero and just build yourself back up with the health model that you need in order to feel whole, to feel happy and to be healthy, right? Another thing is to respect your fullness. <laughs> and this is an interesting one. Because some of us, because of our history of eating, we don't necessarily know when we're full. But if you're eating and you recognize, hey, I've had enough, I think I've satisfied my hunger, you need to respect your fullness and back away from the plate. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a great concept, but it's difficult to put in practice, which is why I say show yourself some grace. Because knowing, hey, if I have four tacos and I'm done, I'm done and I don't need it, and I don't need more guac, and I don't need to eat the whole basket of chips just because they put them in front of me. And You know, I could, I could skip all the breadsticks before my pasta plate comes because I know I'm full, I'm good right now. And not because I shouldn't eat it, but because you're full. You're simply full, you've had enough of that. And that also comes with this next step, which is, discovering the satisfaction that you have when you eat. And many of us are used to eating on the go and eating until we're like past capacity of full. But discovering the satisfaction that you have when you eat something means I can have a bite of something and it'd be so satisfying that I've had enough. And you yeah. know when you've done that before, right? You've had like um, I love in old movies here. Now I'm going to tell on myself, right? Okay, I love historical romance dramas and things like that, guys. Just don't bully me in the comments. But in the movies where you'll see a woman at a restaurant and she's like cuts into her tiramisu and she just takes a bite and she's like, ah, delicious. And, and there's like this sigh of relief and satisfaction. Knowing that I know, I know. <laughs> But knowing that moment when you've had everything that you need, and whether it's a bite or the entire meal, you know, knowing that yes. I need to check in with myself and I need to say, how much of this do I really want? How much yes. of this do, do I really need? And being okay with wherever you land with that. Maybe it's with um, having a bite or maybe you need a little bit more of it just to satisfy yourself. So. Discovering that satisfaction, it, it's like a, it's a spectrum, I'll say. You'll have to ease into understanding when I'm happy with what I've had and when I want a little bit more. And that goes back to understanding your hunger and understanding that some things you can have a bite of and be satisfied, but your body hasn't had enough. And so you need to have a little bit more. You guys let me know in the comments. I don't want to burn my cookies either. <laughs> No, I'm like, no. when I see Chef turn around, I'm like, I'm ready. I can go get no. it. No, we, we still have a couple more, right? 
Yes, we do. We have two more. So one of the other ones is to move your body, right? That's our physical activity where we get things moving and we get things going. Because as much as we're focusing on what we're eating and why we're eating it, we also need to balance that with other things. And so physical activity is one of the ways your body can burn off what it needs to burn off and really use up those nutrients that you're taking in when you eat. And when you think about eating as I'm giving my body what it needs, then you'll also want to use your body, right? So that it can burn off and utilize everything that you're giving it because it needs it. And when you don't do that, there's like a little, there's a gap, right? There's a disconnect in your body being able to fully function, which is why you can wake up and still be tired. You've ever gone, if you've ever gone to bed at night and you had a great meal and then you went to bed and you wake up and you just feel heavy, right? You probably haven't burned it off enough, right? So when you went to bed, it just sat there. Everything's hanging out just in the same spot it was before you went to bed. So moving your body, having some sort of physical activity, gets you going and it burns off all those things, those nutrients and things that you're giving it throughout the day. And I'm in a space where I'm learning how to do that too, guys. I'm not really the gym type. <laughs> I mean, I like socializing, but I'm not gonna talk to you on the treadmill. I'm just not gonna do it. I, I don't know if the spin class is for me. So I'm kind of navigating my path here with um, the physical activity, but understanding the need to move your body. I'll tell you one thing, personally, I was concerned about my serotonin levels, right? And I realized that physical activity can also balance out your serotonin levels. And serotonin isn't really something that we check for when we get a physical, unless there's too much of it around your brain. And so I had to realize that the physical aspect of my life was declining and I needed to boost it up in order to balance out some of the things within me. And so moving my body and understanding that if I'm a little extra sluggish, if I'm a little moody or irritable, I might need to burn a few more calories and energy, you know, to get my body going and get it balanced out where it needs to be. So it's a really good thing if you can check in with your body and also do a little research, check in with your physician and maybe talk to a dietitian or a nutritionist and figure out what do I need in order to balance some things out? You know, what do I need um, to utilize in order to kind of get myself on this healthy path? And that's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to get additional resources and get a couple tests done to figure out what's going on with your body if you can't figure it out yourself. And the last one is to honor your health. And that's simply what I just said. It's to check in with your body and get the help you need when you can't figure out what's going on. Because life is precious, we need you here, and we want you to be here and be happy and enjoy everything and all the fullness that life has to offer. And so checking in with yourself and taking care of your health and establishing healthy habits that honor your body, honor your mind, and honor your soul is at the core of everything we want to talk to you about today. All right, let me know what you think. How are we feeling about intuitive eating? How are we feeling about some of these principles, guys? So Pam says, I definitely need to do some intuitive evaluation of what I eat. Thanks for this message. Mm -hmm. So I do. I love that. And that self-evaluation can be very, very hard. So I applaud you. It can. It can. And I literally sat with myself because I was like, ooh, the irritability is getting to you, girly. What's going on? I'm like, vitamin D? Okay. Get some, get some fish oil, you know, get, get some omegas into you, but also move the body. You gotta, even if it's just the dance party, like I've literally started <laughs> and my family kind of looked at me like I was crazy. Cause I'd set my echo dot to go off at a certain time and like play a song that made you want to get up and start dancing. And just for a couple of minutes, just to move your body and get things going. It really makes a difference in your day. It really does. I'm checking mine, Sierra. Did I'm going. I see you. I was like, is she taking it out or is she leaving it in? Look, I'm coming check for out it. yours and see. I know yours were much bigger than mine, so they're going to be, oh, my gosh. I can't. I'm, I'm a little jealous. They are a bit bigger than yours. And I still have batter left over, which is crazy. But we're getting light brown on the bottom. 
So let me let me show you all mine so you can get an idea. They crack on top and that's good. They have this little crack on top. I'll try and yeah. go up very close. Oh, chef's so good. <laughs> I'm proud. You should be proud. We're making it. Mine kind of look like biscuits. <laughs> Mine do too. Okay. Let me see if I can. Uh... Are we leaving them out them. now? I'm going to take mine out. I've got this right on the bottom. Just okay. a nice, solid, golden brown. Okay. That's where I am. Yeah? I, I feel safe. A little light brown on the top. A little light brown on the top. I've got this golden brown on the bottom. Okay. I'm going to get my cooling rack here. Did you just say cool and rack, Sierra? I did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Woo 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 woo. I actually yes, bought this during. I bought this during quarantine. <laughs> Let me be completely honest with you. I was like, I think I need a cooling rack. You know, I want. I want to take it big time. And I, I leveled up and got the cooling rack, guys. Every home should have a cooling rack. It really changes things. I agree. I'm going to put out all the really nice looking ones first. All right. It's a pretty, looks delicious. I know. Do y'all see what she did? Listen. I love Chef K. I love her. Because this looks like a biscuit I ate as a kid. <laughs> when your mom's like, you can, you can roll out the biscuits, that's exactly what it looks like. That's exactly what and it looks like. And, you know, I think it's funny. I'm trying to think of, I don't know what I was looking for, but in other countries, you know, biscuit is synonymous with cookie. Mm, uh, yes. Not for us here, but there are in, in other countries. So, you're so I'm technically winning either way is what I'm hearing from you, Chef. Yes. Yeah, guys. I'm pretty impressed. I have to, uh... I had to put my breath. I had to put my mug over there. Oh my gosh, Sierra! Give me the thumbs up, guys. Give me the thumbs up if you're loving it. Ah uh, yes, we need either hearts, 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 thumbs up. Let us know in the comments. I had an incredible teacher, an incredible teacher. I know there's some folks that are living vicariously through you that uh, would really not proud. jump to bake. You can do it. I feel like this is like the commercials where they're like, I did it and you can too. Like, this is so true. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be yes. on the kitchen this commercial. Sign me up. I'm here for it. Thank you, Meharry Wellness Club, for giving me an opportunity to shine. Thank you, Kitchen This. Y'all heard so that. So impressed. I'm really impressed. Pam says, looks so great. Bianca says, I will take two of each. <laughs> I hear you, Bianca. We're here. We're here. Also, the smell is delicious. Can we talk a bit about that? Like, I'm not even sure. Is it the vanilla? Is it the almond? It smells incredible, Chef. I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a combination of both. I will say okay. it's more the almond. Okay. The they are very, very almond scented. Okay. Because I've never smelled like almond as a scent to smell in cooking so I didn't know how to pinpoint it but it does smell delicious let me get a little let me get a little platter going and then I, I may, I'm making a little tea because oh boy I already know and then I do want to hear from you all in the comments of course I know some ideas of some things that we may make over the summer but of course, let us know if you found your way here because of, I don't care how you found your way here. You are anyway. here now. If you're with the Meharry Wellness Club, please, please, please let us know that. Drop a comment. Yes. If you are going to try this 
gluten-free recipe. recipe. Come on. You Drop can do it. In the comments. I think everybody. We should start a challenge. Yeah, if you all don't make it tonight, but you come back and make it, that's one of the best parts about Kitchen This. I'm always here. So I know just the other night there was a young lady making our... Uh, I think she was making our broccoli cheddar soup or the local really? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. but we ran that class in January and she was making it last night and we were chatting back and forth. So if you come back to the live video afterwards, just say hey and I'll be right here. You know what? I'm really impressed because I see what the touch of sugar did as well. And I love it. Like the sugar on the outside of the ball, I see how that changed everything. It changes up your texture just a little bit. And I'll say it also saves you. So say if you didn't whip your egg whites quite enough, mm -hmm. the sugar helps to like contain the cookie from spreading too much. So you ah. get a nice little outside, but then also it does overspread. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Um, Sierra, I'm seriously so impressed. I oh, also, y'all, I cannot wait to see her photo because she takes like the best food photos. Did but you see me? I like went and found some almonds to throw around the edge of the plate. I wish I had cut them. <laughs> y'all see what I'm talking about? Yes. Let me go find some. Uh... I'm going to go find some almonds or something. Honestly, I've never cut them in half, so I'm a little nervous. I'm, I kind of wanted to have some shaved or something. Something uh, cool. Let me get, I'm going to leave this one here, and I'm going to have to find myself some type of way to jazz my plate up like Sierra's. You know what? <laughs> I told Chef last class, I said, what I lack in talent, I make up for in design, Okay. You'll never know. <laughs> I love it. And I'm going to have to cash in on some of the services uh, eventually, you know, down the road. Yes, we'll team time. up. We'll team up. I love it. Sacred spaces. I have my mug. Ah, yay! I love it. And don't tell my mom. She's still jealous I haven't ordered one for her yet. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. This okay, is the perfect combination. Let us know in the comments if you have questions. I've got to, I've got to break one open while my tea is steeping there because I just, oh yes, Sierra. Yep, yep. This is what we, this is what we're working with on the inside, y'all. Soft pillow. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all can see that. Man, oh man. I can taste it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You really need that smell of vision that you talked about last time. And taste of vision. Mm-hmm. You're trying this recipe. It's a done deal, folks. You're trying it out. Add this to your list. This is really delicious. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Is that mama? Thank you, mama. Um, Y'all, you get a little bit of a crunch on the outside. That's kind of what Sierra was alluding to without rolling it in the sugar. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. And then on the inside, just nice, oh. soft, tender cookie. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm going to throw that one over here, too. Mm -hmm. oh, so delicious. I see it as a tea cookie. I'm a coffee girl, so I'll throw back a cup of coffee with it. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. and, um, Bianca says, thank you, ladies, for sharing. Thanks. Absolutely. I know so I'll have to head out. If you have questions for Sierra, her info is down below as well. And then I'll make sure to put it in the post, but you have it there, the McKissick Health 
please find her on all platforms and follow. You are doing your mind, body, and soul a disservice if you don't. Thank you. Oh. Serious. Little tokens, yeah. little nuggets. When you when you least think you need them throughout the day and you get on social media and you're like, oh, I'm just scrolling, scrolling, and you either just get something that's super, over. super funny or something <laughs> super, yeah. super rewarding. You but know what? Yeah, Chef, we were supposed to bring jokes. Oh, snap. We forgot. You know, guys, if Did you're you still there, one? I love a good knock-knock joke. I just remembered. I'm trying to remember. I think one of the kids just told, oh, oh. I don't want to mess it up. You know how I feel about messing up jokes. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Oh, oh, okay. Did the, you okay, I got one. I got one. My mom is like helping me, like the alley hoop right here, right here. <laughs> what did the traffic light say to the other traffic light? What did the traffic light say to the other traffic light? Uh-huh. Don't look, I'm changing. <laughs> If you were not here last time, if you are new and you're in the comments, we could be here for a while. Because... We could. We could. Because I'll start Googling. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I, um, I'm trying to think of what I heard. I definitely just heard a joke. Mm, I just heard a joke last week, right when, right when school was getting out. Okay. I got a food one for you. Okay. What do you call a pig who does karate? Ah. I know this one. I know this one. Pork chop. A pork chop. <laughs> yeah, that one is a good one. I knew it was a good that food. That one's joke. for the chef. Yeah, that's for the chef. I do love a good food joke. I'm trying to think. I had, man, me and my kids, we were doing a whole bunch of jokes. And, really? Huh, I'm just. That's okay. I'm You'll post it later next week or this weekend. You'll give us a little yes. laugh. Tickle yes. us a little with the joke. Yes. <laughs> what was the, it was like, what, uh, did you hear about the guy who, uh, did you hear about the guy who lost the left side of his body? No. No? No. It's okay. He's all right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, Who comes up with these things? <laughs> I oh, didn't see that coming. I, I didn't that see it coming. Good. I didn't see it coming. I was thinking about it. I didn't see it coming. It's all right. Oh man. Okay. Yo, y'all are welcome. You're welcome. If you're still here, bless you and you're welcome. <laughs> that was for you. That was all for you. You're so welcome. I'm so glad. So normally on, um, on a lot of Kitchen This classes, we pray right at the end. Sarah, I can do a prayer. Or since you are a guest host, I definitely want to invite you if you would like to pray us out as people oh, yeah. are leaving. Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't mind at all. Are okay. we ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this awesome time for us to come together online and engage with one another and laugh with one another and eat good snacks with one another. God, this is what we call a holistic and well-rounded evening. And so we honor you and we thank you for this opportunity to spend time with one another. And we ask that as we part and go our separate ways that you just keep us covered, that you keep us on your mind and that you keep us um, at peace with one another and with ourselves as we try to move forward in living our healthy lifestyle. We thank you so much again for this moment and every moment that is to come. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for having me. I always love it when you invite me. And I thank Meharry Wellness Club for inviting me back again. I love the food, guys. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely upfront with you. Intuitive eating is my thing because I know what I want and I want it. How about that? <laughs> I'm I'm glad. I'm gonna be thinking about it. And for me, going into the summer, this is just this is the perfect time. You know, perfect school time. year has wound down. 
it's the perfect time for me to get my gears going to really yeah. be conscious and premeditate about those. So Absolutely. I thank you. Yes, and balancing it out. That's all that's all it's about. Finding habits that you can sustain and finding balance. I thank you. Well, thank y'all, you it so has much. been so awesome. It really, really has. Thank you, thank you to Sierra. Thank you to everybody at the Meharry Wellness Club at the Center for Health Policy, Meharry Medical College. And mm-hmm. join us here every single week, live cooking classes. And also, again, check out the McKissick Health and Wellness on all platforms mm-hmm. so that you can get a weekly dose of just goodness all around spiritual and health, wellness, and goodness. So mm-hmm. I hope you try to make it. Enjoy the rest of your night in this good weather. We love y'all. And Sierra, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm going to enjoy these cookies, and I'm pretty proud of myself. Yes, you should Everybody, be. we can do this. Come on, guys. Let's tackle it. Yes, we can. That's perfect. That's the note to end it on. We can do this. I don't care what it we is. Can we can do it. We can do this. All of it. Mm-hmm. Bye. Night, y'all. Good night.